have you guys here and we will, you know, we will get started and, um, and then I'll get back with chat in a second, but just so happy to have you guys here and uh, we will kick this off. So welcome to, is your organization ready for the next level? And I really appreciate those of you who popped in because I know that time is valuable and I'm going to try to make this as value packed as possible because I know that, you know, everyone's busy. So thank you so much for joining me. My name is Sharon Gill. And um, just a little bit about myself. I help entrepreneurs take their ideas from concept to market. I utilize a 360 degree approach to, you know, of life coaching, <laughs> business strategies, and spiritual awareness coaching when I'm working with my entrepreneurs. Because I believe that you bring your whole self to your organization. So I touch on your life issues, your spiritual awareness issues, and of course, business strategies. And I also work with organizations to deliver leadership training to their established and emerging leaders. So that's, those are my two passions. So that's who I am. And if you want more information on who I am, you know, I'm on LinkedIn. I have an about page. I have a website that has an about page. I don't want to waste too much time trying to say who I am. So anyway, what qualifies me? Real quick, I co-founded and built a multi-million dollar law firm um, from the ground up with my husband. I also founded a community nonprofit that served thousands and raised millions in donations. I have helped train dozens of leaders and teams in several organizations nationwide. And I think the most important is I have also started two companies that failed in under one year. And why is that so important? because that's just business, right? You know, sometimes you win, sometimes you don't do as well, but the failure of those two companies, which were the companies I had before my law firm and the nonprofit, those two companies, the lessons I learned from those failure helped to propel me to actually build and co-build two great organizations. And I'm also able to spot when there are challenges um, facing my clients and when they're on that, you know, that road where they can either go, you know, go down or they can, you know, self-correct and, and take their company forward. So um, failures is not always, you know, the end. It's sometimes just the beginning of something great. All right. So entrepreneurship, business leadership really is all about mindset, right? And so I want to start with that. So for your company to be ready for the next level, you personally must be ready for the next level. And so here's a quote I read in a leadership book. It says, play ahead of the game, ahead of where you really are. What does that mean, playing ahead of the game? I want to illustrate something to you from my own experience. So every year when I run my law firm with my husband, every year we would get a yellow pad, just like this yellow pad together, and we would pretend, right? We would say, if we had, and it could be any number for you guys, so whatever number you are right now, project out, you know, maybe three, four times, right? So we would say, if I had $250,000, if we're making that per year, what would we do? You know, so we would, we would write a plan for the future, <laughs> from our present. So we would think if I had quarter million dollars, if we're making quarter million dollars, we're not a $50,000 company. So if we're making quarter million dollars, what would we do? So we would think about things like how many employees would we hire? Uh, how much would we spend on marketing? How much space would we need? So remember now, we're not there yet. We're just projecting, right? We are just projecting like, what would we do? What would we do if we had all these things? And we would literally make a strategic plan, a plan of action as if we were already there. And then most importantly, we would execute. We would execute on that plan. What does that look like? So if we had, let's say three employees and we felt like, we would need another one or two. We would at least start the process of getting the advertising out. We would interview. We, if we felt like we needed more space, we would start looking around for more space. We would take action. And in so doing, 
we were always playing ahead of the game. And I tell you, year after year, we would actually convert that 250 projection. It would actually become more because we would take the steps. We would, we would already be out there in the future. We'll be thinking like the person in the future. And we'll be making decisions from the person in the future. And it sounds a little, maybe a little risky to some, but trust me, entrepreneurship is all about the mindset. It's all about risk-taking, you know? And so we would always play ahead of where we really are at the moment. Um, okay, so before you grow your company, you have to grow yourself, okay? Remember, as leaders, as entrepreneurs, you are going to be the lid, the lid of your organization. What does that mean? What's the lid? Well, the company will only grow as much as you have grown, okay? It's not going to grow beyond your capabilities. So it will only grow as much as you have grown. So before you can grow your company, you have to grow yourself. All right. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to um, do a quick poll right now because I want to know from you guys, those of you um, who are working for yourself or who, you know, and let me know who's working for an organization. I'm going to launch a poll real quick. Just take, uh, I'm going to give you like 30 seconds to answer and then I'll, 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 I'll share it. So entrepreneur, corporate, nonprofit, what do you do? All right, so, so far I'm seeing 70% entrepreneurs, 30% corporate. Okay, six to seven, 33. All right, five more seconds for everyone to vote. All right, so I'm gonna end this polling right now and I'm gonna share the results with you guys. So entrepreneurs, we have 60% and for those who work with corporations, 40%, okay. Great. So, all right. So whether you work with a, uh, with a corporation or you work for yourself, before you can grow your organization, your company, your division, your department, you have to first grow yourself. So what does that look like? Well, you have to ask yourself certain questions, right? Who do I want to become? You know, what, what is my brand? What do I want to be known for? Who do I want to become? What do I want to be known for? You know, so you start to ask yourself these questions and you go beyond asking to where do you need to improve in your skill sets? Like, for example, if I were to ask you, what books are you reading now? You know, should you go back to school? Do you need to get further education? Do you need to take some courses? Um, you know, where do you need to improve your skill sets? For example, I know that even though I'm a coach, I am constantly working on my skill sets. I'm constantly taking courses, being coached up because the minute you stop learning, you stop growing. And so you ask yourself too, what is your brand? What is the public perception of who you are? You know, what are you saying on social media? Do you have a strategy for social media? Um, you know, and, and is that strategy consistent? Are you consistent across all platforms? Even if you work for a corporation, right, you still have a brand. You know, when people think of your name, when they think of you, what, are, what is the perception that comes to mind? And, and perception, if you're consistent in your behavior, that's what you're going to be judged on. So what is the public perception of you and who you are? Who is in your network? Um, you know, is it time to branch out? Have you outgrown your network? Are you the smartest person in your network? So if you're the smartest person in your network, you've outgrown your network because it should always be someone that you're stretching to become more like, right? And, you know, I always believe it's a great middle position, right? Someone you're stretching to become more like and someone who you are bringing along as well. So who is in your network? Do you have a coach or a mentor? For those of you in the corporate space, do you have a, a, a mentor or a sponsor or someone who is looking out for you in the corporate space? Um, 
if you are an executive, do you have an executive coach? Um, you know, are you up with the times, with the trends in your industry? So there's so much to learn. So for you to raise the lid on your organization, you have to raise the lid on yourself. I mean, are you part of a chamber of commerce? Are you part of a mastermind group? There are many, many opportunities for you to level up. I mean, being here, you know, it's, it's, it's a free webinar, but it's, it's, it's also an opportunity. There are many of these for you to get additional learning. So um, in, the, in, the, in the chat, right, I just want to hear some of your thoughts. Like, what do you want to be known for? And, or, or what area do you think you need to develop most in? You know, and, and again, this is not a judgment, but what do you want to be known for? Um, do you want to be known for uh, as a, a leader of great integrity? Do you want to be known as a leader who delivers results? Do you want to be known for a purposeful person, an empathetic leader, an empathetic boss, a compassionate boss? Um, or do you, um, what area do you think right now, if you th when you think about yourself, like I need to develop in this area, I need to develop my communication skills, my writing skills, my leadership skills. If you're not too shy to share, you could just drop it in the chat box. I'll give you guys 30 seconds. And if I don't see a chat, I'll just keep it moving. But if, does anyone want to just put in a chat box? Okay, let's see. Um, okay, so Charles says leadership in the financial industry. Beth said, I want to be known for empowering women to share their stories, to serve others. I need to increase engaging social media content and consistency. Great. Osiris said communication skills. Great, great sharer, guys. Um, so in the case of Beth, for example, so she wants to be known for empowering women to share their stories to serve others. But she said also, that's what I want to be known for, but I know I must increase my engagement on social media. I have to be more consistent. And that's for Beth and that's for everyone. Michelle says communication. Um, Michelle and Osiris, they might be, they might be a communication coach that you could, you know, I, I'm seeing a lot of those folks on LinkedIn and that's their targeted focus to help entrepreneurs and leaders develop their communication gifts. So wonderful, wonderful share. Uh, someone has raised their hands. Let's see. Dragana. All right, let's see here. All right, I saw the hand raised. Let's see here. Um, go ahead. Dragana, you were on, you were um, allowed to talk. Did you want to say something? If not, if just drop, maybe it was an error that you raised your hands, so you could just drop your questions in the chat box. I'm gonna move, I'm gonna move along. Okay, great. Thank you guys for sharing that. So we'll keep it going. So, all right. So the next thing that I want to touch on is this. Before you are a leader, success is all about growing yourself. But when you become a leader, success is all about growing others. So this is a quote that I actually like, right? So before you're a leader, success is about growing yourself. So that's a good thing, right? But when you become a leader, Success is about growing others. Okay, let's see. A couple people in the chat. Tumi says, I want to develop a lot of people. I feel like I have access to a few people. I need to manage my time better to be able to do more. Great. Michelle, love that quote. Tumi, one of the things, I know I may be able to touch on this uh, in this webinar, but I'm not sure. But in order to get more time to manage your time better, we have to prioritize. And I've been talking about that all week this week. You know, there, twenty percent of your clients, twenty percent of your efforts, twenty percent of your um, your your clients, I should say, will give you eighty percent of your um, returns, right? But what we tend to do, because we don't do this exercise, we tend to spend a lot of time on the the the, the lower performing and the lower. Um, return activities. And what we need to do is to figure out what are the 20% of activities or clients, who are they 
that give us 80% return and take 80% of our time and spend on those folks and delegate and do something different with the other. So we'll, we'll, we'll keep going along. Okay. All right. So what does this mean then with regards to others? So what can I do for my team to make them better? Okay. Um, how can I make work more fun and flexible while maintaining productivity, especially nowadays? But so the 40% of you guys who work in companies, you have teams. And we all know that your team, when you have team, your team, that's your most important asset. Because if they're not good, they're going to pull the company down. They're going to pull the division down, right? And nowadays with teams working remotely, how can I make work more fun and flexible while maintaining productivity? For those of you who are entrepreneurs who may have a one or a two person uh, team, maybe team one might just be yourself. Think about it in the context of yourself or in the context of yourself and your, your virtual assistant. Okay, so let me go to the next slide. Okay, so um, what can you do for your team? Classes um, for your team. You can, you can sponsor classes for your team. You can conduct internal or Zoom training or you can do external training. Um, there's a lot of um, workshops. Prior to COVID, there was a lot of workshops being offered even in the community, community college workshops. Um, you could teach it from a book. You can, I did it with my team for a long time. As a matter of fact, um, I had this book, Developing the Leader Within You. This is a 2.0 version. And you can buy books and train your team from a book. Um, you could also bring in a consultant who are, you know, who's able to really get with your team without you being there and, um, you know, figure out what are the, the uh, issues on your team. I remember in, gosh, going back 10, 15 years ago, we brought in a consultant to our organization. <laughs> and the first thing that the consultant said was, you guys were not going to be part of this exercise. You know, we want to talk to each team member. We don't want you to be there because we don't want their answers to be affected by you being there. And that was kind of scary for me, um, you know, in a sense, because, you know, as, as a leader, you, you want to know what's going to be said about you. But anyway, was it really the right thing? And I learned a lot about myself as a leader from that exercise. You know, the two main takeaways for me was that I was delegating, but I wasn't inspecting what I delegated. So I was a good delegator, but I wasn't following up with what I delegated. So that was one feedback that came from the team. And the second feedback, I had a family member working for me. And the perception on the team was that that person was getting preferential treatment. And the perception from the family member was that she was getting treated very unfairly. So two different perceptions. And so one of the key takeaways was for me to put a layer between me and that family member so she wouldn't be reporting directly to me. These would have been blind spots for me had I not brought in an outsider, right? So sometimes we can't see what our, our, our issues are because we're part of the problem. So part of team development is, you know, allowing, allowing that process to happen. 360 degree reviews and performance appraisals, right? So a lot of companies don't like this particular model, but it's a really good model. It's, it's one where the, you're, you're being reviewed as well as your team is reviewing you, right? So the 360 approach where performance appraisals are done up and down, um, where not only are you reviewing your team members, the team members are also reviewing you. It's a very good feedback loop. Um, you can also engage your team in some in some team exercises, some community project. You know, finding a, a nonprofit or or some cause that's bigger than than what you guys are involved with at work, and and allow you guys to be part of that process of where you're actually adding value to the community, making donations, um, volunteering, whatever the case may be, but doing some type of a community project team exercise. And like I said before, bring in a consultant. But remember that your team is your greatest asset. So you need to develop 
your, your members and you need to spend time investing in their growth as well. More companies need to do that. All right, so we're gonna talk now a little bit about vision, mission, values. And the question is, are they still relevant? Mission, vision, and values. And are they still relevant? So I'm gonna ask you guys a question in a second about your vision and mission. But let me define it just to, just to refresh your memory. So a mission or a mission statement is a formal summary of the aims and values of a company, right? Of organization or individual. So it's a summary of your aims and values. A vision statement describes what a company desires to achieve in the long run, generally in a time frame of five to 10 years or sometimes even longer. And values are basic and fundamental beliefs that guide or motivate attitudes or actions. They help us to determine what is important to us. So even if you are a one-person entrepreneur, you should know what your values are. It's very important that you know what your value, what are your non-negotiables, right? And I, I say it like this, right? So first, you know your values. And then the next thing is based on your values, what is your vision? A vision is a picture of the preferred future. In a nutshell, it's a picture of the preferred future. So what are your values? I mean, your values then you know, dictate your vision. And then your mission is how you, how you walk out that value and how you walk out that vision on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm gonna give you a couple of examples. Um, from Walmart. So Walmart's mission is to save people money so they can live better. Their vision is to be the destination for customers to save money, no matter how they want to shop. And their values are service to the customer, respect for the individual, and they strive for excellence and act with integrity. So that's what they value. And their vision is to one day be the place, right? the place for everyone to shop, no matter how they want to shop. And we know that Walmart has been working on that vision for a long time. And how they walk without in the day-to-day -day is they want to save people money right now so that they can live better. And if they do their mission right by saving people money so they can live better, then they're on their way to that vision, which is to be the ultimate destination for people to save money no matter how they want to shop. So my question to you, I'm going to do a quick little poll, is do you have a personal mission or a company mission statement? I'm going to just launch this real quick. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. Do you have, a, if you're an entrepreneur, solo, do you have a personal mission statement? Do you have a vision statement? Um, do you know what your values are? Okay, so I'm going to leave this poll up for another 15 seconds to see some of you guys are voting. And in the chat box, for those of you who says, I actually vote for both sides. Those who said no and those who said yes. For those who said yes, if you could just jot in the chat box just what your vision, mission, or values are. It doesn't matter in what order. Just, you know, you can just pick one. And uh, for those of you who said no, I'd like to know why not? So let me give you the results so far. So 67% of you said, yes, you had a personal or company mission statement and 33% said no. Okay. So let's see in chat here. So the Dragana said, awareness of values becomes my compass. Dragana, I would want to know, is that your, um, is that, is that your mission wish? Uh, I'd like a little bit more clarity on that. If anybody else wants to share if you know what your values, your mission, your vision, and if you don't have one, okay. Beth said her vision is to empower women to share their message by bolstering and encouraging through writing, coaching, editing, and training. So that's what she's doing on a day-to-day -day basis, right? She's trying to empower women to share their message. So 
She's by bolstering and encouraging through writing, coaching, editing, and training. So Beth's vision then could be something like this for the preferred future. I would have empowered 10,000 women, you know, before she died to, to, you know, to share their messages. That's kind of the vision, the picture of the preferred future. Joy said, for her company, Abay Innovation Studios, our mission is promoting sustainable development, leveraging technology. Great. And we're going to talk about technology in a, in a moment, Joy. And so um, that's Joy's company's mission. I would love to, I'd be curious to know if Joy's company had a vision because their mission is promoting sustainable development, leveraging technology. So that's what they're doing in the now. What is the vision for the future? You know, so I'd love to know if, 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 if Joy, you can, if you have, if you have a vision statement, I'd love to see what that is. I'll move on for now, but you can put it in the chat box. I'll revisit it later. Okay. So let me just share this quick story with you guys. And for those of you who've probably gone to business school, you might have heard this Tylenol story. The reason why values are so important. As a leader, as an entrepreneur, it's important to know your values because that's how you are basing your decisions. Believe it or not, when the rubber hits the road, you're going to default to what you value. When challenges come in your business or in your organization, you are going to make a, you're going to default to your values. So it's important to know what do you value? You know, do you value integrity? Do you value family? Do you value faith? What do you value? You're going to default to that. Quick story about the Tylenol story, right? So for those of you who've heard this before, years ago, I think it was in the 80s, Tylenol had a situation where someone had put cyanide in their capsule, in their yeah, capsules, and had killed some people. It might have been two or three. And they had to make a big decision, right? The decision was, should we pull every pill bottle off the shelf all over the world, or should we just wait and see? You know, if this is a, a, um, a regional thing or if this is a worldwide thing, right? Nationwide, worldwide. So the decision was made quickly, though, that they would not wait because one life was already too, too many. So Tylenol pulled every pill bottle off the shelf all over the world and everyone thought they're gonna go out of business, they're gonna go bust. Well, the story goes that Tylenol, after that experience, they did, they did lose some, of course, lost millions from that move, but they became known as the most trusted brand in the world, the most, most safest and trusted brand in the world because they made that decision based on their values. When they asked them, how did they make that decision so quickly? The answer was, we are a company of integrity, right? And honesty. And if you're a pill company, you want to know that the, the manufacturer values honesty and integrity. And based on their values, they were able to make that decision very quickly. So I always instruct entrepreneurs when I'm coaching to start with your values, know what are your non-negotiable and stick with that. So um, Chris Osiris said, sorry, Osiris said, my mission is to give, oh, let's see if somebody has popped in. My mission is to give my clients peace of mind by providing safe, reliable transportation services. Okay, so that's a good mission. Think about your vision. Um, before you die, Chris, or in the next five to 10 years, Osiris, I mean, before you die, how many clients do you want to do that for? You know, what's your ultimate vision? So that's what you're doing in the day-to-day. -day. Great, great mission. Dragana says, vision, a healthy, humane, and modern Serbian society of the 21st century, which consists of conscious and free individuals and leaders. That's a beautiful vision. You see, a vision is supposed to sound like it's way out there. She said, a healthy, humane, and modern Serbian society of the 21st century, which consists of conscious and free individuals and leaders. Beautiful, beautiful vision. Dragana may never see that, but it's an ideal, right? It's something to work for. And Joy came back with the vision. It says, our vision is to become an international company 
influencing policies, transforming communities in Africa and raising the next generation of thinkers and leaders for Africa. Beautiful. That's what I'm talking about. Vision and mission, right? Vision is very aspirational. It's very um, future oriented. Um, mission is what we're doing now. And you need both. Someone asked me last night in a coaching call, right? I was working with a, an organization and they asked me, which one is more important, um, vision or mission? Vision or mission? And I said, I said vision. I said vision because vision keeps you looking forward. Mission is what we're doing now, but vision keeps you moving forward. It's important to have a vision. You know, I'm a person of faith. So the scripture says, without vision, people perish. People need to have a goal, something to aspire to. Um, and I'll read one more mission. Uh, Tumi said, um, the mission is to achieve more through education, development, and continuous improvement. Vision to create a meaningful life, great, and values, hard work, commitment, and teamwork and respect. Beautiful. Thank you, guys. You guys are awesome. Great, great share. All right. Let's, I'm going to keep moving. Great, great share in that vision, mission, and advisement. But those of you who had answered no, the 33% of the group had said no, they didn't have that. I'm going to ask you to really look at some of these examples and figure out a vision and a mission and values for yourself. And so we already did this. Can you articulate your current mission? You guys did a great job with that. All right, so next thing, goal setting. Goal setting. A lot of people feel like goal setting is a waste of time. Listen, if you don't have goals, you're going to end up somewhere you did not plan, right? So I look at it like this. You know, a goal is when you look at, when you think of a, 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 a target, right? That bullseye. A goal is trying to get you to get to that bullseye. When you don't have a goal, you're going to end up somewhere off the dartboard. Okay. You're going to end up somewhere, but it's not where you're, you plan it. And I, I, I encourage folks to set goals at three levels. One, a modest level, right? One, this level is, is a goal that you feel that like you can actually reach. That's level number one. Level number two, stretch goal. This would be a great surprise if you actually got it. You'd be like, wow, surprise. Like, this is great. You know, I wanted to make 50 grand this year, but man, if I made 75, you know, or 80, that would be awesome. You know, 50 is a modest goal. I'm making 35 right now. If I made 50, that would be, a, you know, it would be good. I feel like I can make it. Stretch would be more like from 35 to let's say 75, right? And then the next level would be the big, hairy, audacious goals, according to Jim Collins. Um, you're exceeding all expectations. It's like going from 35 to 200,000, right? And I always tell people to set goals in these three categories and aim for the number three. Aim for the exceeding. Because when you aim for that crazy goal, you know, the stretch and the modest goals, they don't seem that, that, that hard. And you most likely will drop on one of those. So you need to get an accountability partner, right? Um, when you're setting goals. I mean, you, I don't mean to say tell people what your detailed plans are, but you need to be held accountable for your goals because otherwise it's just words on paper. I always... I always encourage folks to do a vision board, right? A vision board, I have one behind me. A vision board is an exercise that I do every, at the beginning of every year where I design how I want my, my year to look like. I, I have a, a word that I want to define my year. Uh, the, year the word I used this year was evolve, you know, stretch. So I wanted to really grow as a person this year and I wanted to evolve beyond what I was doing. I wanted to stretch beyond what was comfortable for me. And, you know, having that intention set at the beginning of the year, I've seen how much I have evolved and grown um, this year. Um, so get a vision board, you know, write down, you know, your dreams, your vision for the year and set goals to accomplish those visions. It works 
my friends, when you can see it and you can see it all the time, it's a reminder. The vision board actually works as your accountability partner if you don't have one. All right, so growing your company. So sometimes if you are an entrepreneur with a small operation, it's hard to sometimes get contracts, right? It's hard to get, um, it's hard to qualify sometimes for bigger opportunities. And we've, we've heard the word uh, collaborations used a lot on social media, right? And a lot on these, these platforms. So I wanna just touch on this briefly for you just to give you an idea of how you can do this the right way. So there's two types of collaborations. There's partnerships and there's joint ventures, right? So what is a partnership? So let's say that there's a contract and it requires you to be a certain size and you're, you know, you know that you're qualified for it, but you're not going to get it because you're too small. Well, you can partner with someone and you can do a partnership where you guys are actually officially in business together. Um, but there's some pros and cons, right? So before you were an individual with your own organization, your own company, just your own corporation. But now for the partnership, hmm, you're kind of tying together, you know, your assets, your liabilities. So there's pros and cons for that, right? You want to be very, very careful. You want to make sure that those who you partner with, that your values are aligned. We spoke about values before. So you want to make sure that the things that you value that your partner also values, right? You need a written agreement to spell out responsibilities on both sides. You want to talk about things like, if this doesn't work out, how do we go apart peacefully? And what are the profit splits? What are, who makes what decisions? I mean, very, very important in a partnership to have everything spelled out. I can tell you that um, having a law background, I'm not an attorney myself, but my, my husband is, and we run a law, law firm for 23 years. We've seen a lot of just partnerships gone awry, just nightmares, because there weren't proper written agreements, um, things weren't spelled out, and what could have been beautiful ended up being a nightmare. I prefer joint ventures, right? Where you're two independent businesses doing a deal together. You're separate, but equal. Um, make sure though, that your mission and visions and values are aligned. Not so much your vision, but your mission and your values are aligned. Because two people with different value system and two different mission, it's kind of hard to work together. Something's gonna go wrong eventually. And in this one, you also need a written agreement, but joint venture, you keep your individuality, you keep, you keep your individual company, but you can put together to go after a big contract. And that's a way to actually grow your business. And I'm seeing more and more people doing collaborations and, you know, some of them are actually quite successful. So it's, it's something to think about, but make sure you do your homework with that. Okay. Finishing touches. So I'm going to talk about here, navigating the new normal. And I know people are tired of that word, the new normal, but it is what it is, right? We're, we're living in a post pandemic, or I guess we're still going through the pandemic, but we're living in a different world where technology is just like the name of the game. So navigating the new normal, there are three things you got to do. Embrace technology, look at your executive presence and your self-care and your mental health. So embracing technology. I'm going to go to that. I'm going to give you guys um, some time to put in the chat box. So embracing tech. So this year <laughs> I've had to learn a lot of new technology because before we were working with brick and mortar buildings, right? Where the team is right there. Um, you know, uh, computers are there and COVID happened and we all, most of us anyway, had to go home. And so we had to become friendly with Zoom and Google and um, Google Hangouts and 
we had to get friendly with project management softwares and you know um, Slack, Basecamp, and, and different technology. And so my question for you guys, if you just put in the chat, what technology have you learned and embraced this year? So I'm going to keep talking, but I would love for you guys to tell me what technology have you or your organization learned and embraced this year? <laughs> Charles said Zoom. Charles, I wish I had stuck in Zoom. Boy, who could have seen that, right? Beth said Zoom, Slack. More about LinkedIn. Osiris said Zoom, Ring Central. I think I heard about Ring Central. I don't know much about it though. Um, Facebook Live, the whole Google Suite. Yeah, the whole Google Suite for me too. SEO, Microsoft Teams. I know a little bit about that. I need to learn some more. Google Drive, Workplace by Facebook. I tried that job, but I wasn't sure I was going to like it. Cisco WebEx, Zoom, Google Drive. All right, so great, great, great team here. Learning Microsoft Teams and Slack. I'm so proud of all of you guys, really, because really and truly, you guys are embracing the tech because it's what we have to do. We can't curse technology anymore. I don't care if you are 20 or you're in your 50s like myself or even beyond. It doesn't matter. We can't sit on the sidelines anymore and, and fold our arms and say we're waiting on the new normal to, you know, to go away and the old normal to come back. Because my friends, I tell this to everyone, whether they want to hear it or not, the old way of doing business will not be coming back. Okay, there will be a hybrid. They'll, and Beth says so she en embraces technology because it supports her. And that's how we're going to look at it, right? The, the, the workplace of the future will be a hybrid. It will be what we're doing now, which is remote work and, what, and, and some in-person work. But it will never be the same because we will never know when the next pandemic is going to hit. Companies have really invested a lot in technology to, to, to see them through this pandemic and we're gonna keep it there. Furthermore, there are companies saving money on rent of office space. And so that's gonna be the wave of the future. So let's talk about the next thing, right? Executive presence, what is it? If, if you may have heard this term executive presence. Well, according to Forbes magazine, it's your ability to inspire confidence in your subordinates that you are the leader they want to follow. Inspiring confidence among peers that you are capable and reliable, and most importantly, inspiring confidence among senior leaders that you have the potential for great achievements. So whether you are a entrepreneur or you are working in corporate, you have to inspire confidence. That's the executive presence. And executive presence is even more important now because we're on Zoom. And so how do you inspire confidence on Zoom and Google and on all and WebEx and, you know, and all these platforms, right? Because confidence, right, you know, what is confidence? That, that, that ability, right, that to, to do well, to, to, you know, your belief in yourself and, your, and in your abilities. And you have to exhibit that even more so now via these online platforms. Your peers want to know that you are inspiring confidence. Your leaders want to know you're inspiring confidence. And your clients want to know that you're inspiring confidence. So you need to have a vision and articulate it well. We talked about vision. People follow people with vision. They want you to take them somewhere. So if you are leading a team, in corporate, your people are following you because of your vision and you need to articulate your vision well and articulate it often. If you are an entrepreneur, your clients are, are coming to you because you have a clear vision and you need to articulate that well and consistently, right? Um, don't know where point number two is, but build your communication skills, both orally and written. Um, some of you guys had mentioned communication is one of the things you're going to work on. It is so important, orally and written, because we're, we're on Zoom so much nowadays, right? So people are judging us, like you guys are judging me right now, because I'm speaking, 
And it's the same way you're being judged as well when you're making your presentation, right? Whether it's to your internal team or to external stakeholders. So you got to build your communication skills, both orally and written. Build your self-confidence, right? Try some, you know, confidence is built when you have, have wins, right? It's because, because it's belief in yourself and in your abilities. So have some small wins and celebrate your wins. Try things, stretch, grow, go beyond your comfort zone and then succeed. That's going to build your confidence. Try things. Now is the best time to try new things. Okay, let's see who's chatting. <laughs> Thank you, Osiris. I appreciate it. it. Says I'm doing a great job. Thumbs up. All right. Thank you so much. So build your self-confidence, right? So stretch, try something new, challenge yourself, challenge yourself. It will build that confidence. And then I think the next thing is outer appearance matters. So make sure folks that we're on Zoom a lot, make sure that your appearance is not a distraction. Even though you are in your home, maybe around your kitchen table, whatever, wherever you're Zooming from, outer appearance matters. And you have to exhibit confidence when you're on these calls. I find people get on these calls, their lighting is not great. It's dark. When I see someone on Zoom in a dark room, it doesn't give me a lot of confidence. I feel like they're hiding something. They could be the smartest person, but you have to be aware of how you're coming across. Are you inspiring confidence in the person you're trying to, to speak with, to, your, to, you know, to that potential client on a discovery call, to, that, um, to your team members? Outer appearance matters. Your surrounding matters um, when you're on these calls. Make sure there's not a lot of distraction behind you. Um, you know, these are the things that help to inspire confidence um, to, the, to your stakeholders, your potential clients, your actual clients, your team members, and of course, your boss. All right. Oh, there's number two. <laughs> Understand how others experience you. Now that's big guys, to understand how others experience you, to be emotionally aware. So you may think, for example, that, um, well, you know, I think I'm, I think I'm a confident person. I, I, I think you may think a lot of things, but when you're emotionally aware, you understand if perhaps you're talking too fast, you're talking too slow, um, you may be seen as overly assertive, or you may be seen as too passive. Um, understand how others experience you. Be emotionally aware and then make adjustments, right? Make adjustments. All right. Almost done. You guys have been awesome. So last but by no means least, right, is self-care. I hear this a lot, my friends, you know, um, from entrepreneurs, from leaders, from um, just everyone. I'm so burnt out. I'm so stressed. I don't have enough margin. I don't have enough white space on my calendar. Self-care is so important because if you're not healthy, you're not able to perform. But we usually put self-care last, like I did in this slide, but not because of its lack of importance. I actually want to, to end on the best. Self-care, your diet and your exercise. Take a look at that. I was leading a group last night and we were talking about margins and priority. And one gentleman um, on this leadership team, he said, I have literally no margin. I'm trying to do all of this work for my family. I work like 10 hour days. Then I have the, the activities for my kids. Then I have activities at my church. And he was listing all these activities, literally, literally Monday to Sunday, no room for himself. And I said to him, I understand all of that, but with that particular pace, you may not be around to serve anyone at all. And this is a mistake that entrepreneurs make, right? We're always, you know, we like to hustle and we like to grind and that's wonderful. 
But if we don't, if we're not intentional about self-care, we may not be around to enjoy the fruits of that labor. So diet and exercise is key. Meditation. Like how many of you guys, and put in the chat box, actually take time out of your day to just stop and pause for a minute. Breathe in, breathe out, meditate, pray. You know, whatever it is that you do. And I'm a praying person, so I, I pray a lot throughout the day. But how many of you guys give yourself the space to just calm your mind for a little bit? Now, do you know that, the, and this, this is counterintuitive, right? So the more that you spend time thinking, relaxing the mind and meditating, is the more creative you become. And the more creative you become is the more productive you become, right? So how many of you are taking time out of your day, pausing to just meditate, pray, breathing exercise? I'd love to see that in the chat. The next thing, setting boundaries and white spaces. What are boundaries, right? You gotta set up boundaries. You have to know, okay, I'm going to work nine hours. Entrepreneurs like to work 15 hours, but you know what? I'm going to set a boundary. I'm going to work Monday to, to Friday or Monday to Saturday or Monday to Friday. I'm going to work nine hours and Saturday I'm going to work four. And I'm going to give myself space for the weekend. you got to set boundaries. Me personally, I say this, and I'm proud to say this, when I decided to go fully online with coaching, you know, I was running that brick and mortar business with my law practice and with my charity. But last year, my husband and I, we decided to move from Florida to Charlotte and I was going to go completely online. This is before the pandemic. And I was going to do strictly coaching, right? Coaching and leadership development. And when I made that decision, I also built in boundaries. I built it in that I would work four days a week Monday to Thursday, and I would take three days off. I was intentional. I set those boundaries. Once in a while, I may have someone want to speak with me on a Friday when I, you know, my day off, I keep it very, very brief, 30 minutes. That's it. Cause I want that space. So you have to be intentional about setting your boundaries. Okay. Let's see. Um, bed says I calm myself more than I, more than I pray. I'm working on priorities. Um, Linda said, I need to take time to feel God's love. It's so wonderful. That is true, Linda. And if you are able to go in nature, that's a great place where I see God's love and it calms me. It de-stresses me. You know, I'm a person, I check my blood pressure often, right? And when I walk in nature and just walk in the mornings, I come back, I check my pressure. It is like beyond low right? And if I get up and I find myself hustling and all this stuff and I check my pressure, it is not good. And so the difference is just taking that walk in nature, whether it's 30 degrees or whether it's, you know, 80 degrees, I, I go out and I do it. Um, Dragana says, I meditate regularly. Um, Joy says, prayer time is priceless, but not done much on calming. Do both, you know, Prayer can be calming, but there's prayer time. And then there's also just sitting down and just like looking at trees for heaven's sake, looking at birds and just calming the mind. Michelle says, I wouldn't have believed that, that at one time. I'm getting to the point of burnout and truly not being able to help anyone, yet alone myself. I felt there was some portion of that I could understand, but the absolute I couldn't until it happened to me. Something I hope none experienced. I think Michelle is talking about a time when she burnt out to the point of, Michelle, I've been there. I got burnt out six years ago to the point where I had to spend seven months at home. I was running the law practice, running the charity, getting a master's degree. And I also had two kids who were in college, college bound and trying to be superwoman. And then I got really hit with that burnout. And like you said, something you wish no one experienced. Yes, my friends, this is why I'm saying, spending so much time on it because I, as well as Michelle, it seems, got to a place where I wasn't even functional. The doctor said, you better, you just have to step back. I had to make a lot of adjustments, which is why I said, 
I redesigned my life to where I work four days and I work hard, but three days I'm off. And Jez said, meditate and exercise, relaxing during weekends with family. Exactly. So you guys get the picture, right? So setting boundaries and wide spaces. And so the next thing is mental health. Do not isolate. Do not isolate. The pandemic has caused a lot of isolation. Um, but even if you are social distancing, get on Zoom then, you know, have coffee chat. It's not that hard. I always have my cup of coffee and my tea and I'll get on Zoom and I'll talk to my family. I'll talk to my friends. Do not isolate. Share if you're feeling discouraged, anxious, your business not doing so well. Share with others. Do not isolate. And um, finally, again, I reiterate prayer and quiet time. Just have it as a regular part of your day. And my concluding thoughts, the next level of growth begins now. It doesn't begin tomorrow, really. It really begins now. Everything begins now. Tomorrow is never promised, right? So if you want to grow, start to think, how can I start growing? How can I start operating from the future? What books can I start reading? Do I have an Audible subscription? Do I have a Kindle subscription? What can I start doing now to grow myself so I can grow my organization or grow my little you know, company? Play ahead of where you are today, okay? Invest in your personal growth, like we said, you know, hire a coach, get a mentor, um, you know, take some classes, take some courses, invest in the growth of your team. For those of you who have teams, invest in their growth because their growth is really your growth and be flexible, creative, and proactive in the new normal. Flexible, creative, and proactive. You know, it's the agile and adaptable companies that are winning. Oh, Beth asked me, do you have a podcast at Sharon? Beth, I was just, <laughs> my husband just said to me, why don't you start that podcast that you've been trying to start for the last, I don't know, six months? So Beth, I'm going to take it as a sign that I should do it. Osiris said, yes, good idea. Okay, Osiris has confirmation. My husband asked me earlier, Beth is asking me now, and Osiris said, good idea. So for me, I am going to do that. Okay, Lena said, I'll subscribe for sure. Michelle said, yes, please do a podcast. Guys, I am, oh, and someone said, I have two connections for you. Guys, honestly, you have really encouraged me because I was really weighing it when my husband keeps saying, just do a podcast. I was weighing it. Why does it, you know, is it, you know, what would it do? I feel like I do so much content on LinkedIn, but with you guys saying that, I, 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 I promise you, look out before the year ends, I will be launching because of you guys. So thank you for that. And if there are any other concluding um, questions, um, <laughs> Linda says, yeah. If there's any concluding questions, you guys were amazing. Were absolutely amazing. And if any of you guys need help with anything, I offer a free 30 minute discovery call. You guys know what I do. I'm a coach. I'm a strategist. I love what I do. And I love seeing people live up to their full potential. Companies live up to their full potential. Thank you very much, Michelle. Thank you, Linda. Thank you very, very much. And um, I want to honor your time. It was a one hour podcast. It's one hour and 59. Um, it's 59, whatever <laughs> seconds right now. So I thank you very much. Thank you guys. God bless you. Stay safe, stay healthy and um, see, see you next. See you on the podcast, right? Thank you very much, everyone. Take care.